A myth from the future, a quest to the stars, a legend written across galaxies. Guided by the other dimensional Kree warrior called Marvel Boy, the Inhuman Royal Family departs on an odyssey across all creation. Their mission? To search for lost secrets and the last hope of their people. The knowledge the royals seek could change the course of inhuman destiny, but it cannot be attained without cost. For at the end of days, the last inhuman tells the tale of how seven left Earth for the stars, but only six returned. Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. I went ahead and finally read Royals from uh, the Inhumans. This is uh, written by Al Ewing and done uh, with art, I should say, by a bunch of people from John Boy Myers to uh, Javier Rodriguez and a bunch of other talented folk that really bring uh, these characters to life. These are the two volumes right here. You got Beyond inhuman and judgment day now in order if you're interested in this book it might be a little bit uh, worrisome because you're gonna have to read up on some things now the book does a perfectly good job of telling you who the inhuman royal family is and sort of the basic premise but if you really want to get the most out of this i really have to recommend uh, charles soul's uncanny inhuman run his inhuman uh, books and of course Jonathan Hickman's event Infinity with the Avengers and the Illuminati in New Avengers. So yeah, it's a lot of work if you really want to get the most out of this story. If not, then just go ahead and read it. Just assume things are the way they are and you'll like it. But as I always say, some background information really goes a long way and makes you appreciate the story a whole lot more. With Royals, you have a very weird situation. You've got a team of characters, which I love, I am a big Inhumans fan, and you've got these characters that have recently been through some really tough ordeals, especially after the event Inhumans vs. X-Men, which left them at a evolutionary standstill, if you will. I won't spoil that event, but this Royals series uh, goes straight after that. Uh, of course, that event ended uh, Charles Soule's run on the characters, and Al picked up the uh, story and moved it uh, to the stars and beyond in a tale that is about family, compromise, and what it truly means to be alive, and what it truly means to take that sac make that sacrifice for your people, and if it's really worth it this uh, obsession, this cultish obsession, if you will, to progress a species forward instead of maybe reorganizing, rebranding, or doing something else. And I'll get to that in a minute, why I say that. The characters are all awesome. I love Medusa, Black Bolt, uh, uh, Gorgon, Crystal, yada yada. And you got your new humans as well, such as Flint, Inferno, Iso, and stuff like that. Reader, Frank McGee, there's a bunch of characters that Charles Soule introduced in his Inhuman run, which lasted for like 50 to 60 issues, and most of these characters go into Royals as well. Now, after the events of Inhuman vs. X-Men, there is a way, and this is a slight spoiler, to further improve Terra Genesis, and it has to do with the cosmos and the roots, the origins of the Inhumans with the Kree experiments and you finally have an answer as to how this came about and who actually created their creators and it goes into that in a very grandiose matter and when I read an Inhuman story or an Inhuman's book there are certain things I expect of it and one is their world building it's a very secretive society and unfortunately to them, not for us. The Inhuman run from Charles Soule expanded that and created New Atalan. Of course, the city was destroyed and they had to rebuild, so they finally opened up to the world. And a lot of people 
in real life uh, did not like that. They had this notion that the Inhumans are supposed to be super secretive and you only have to enjoy them in small bursts of uh, books here and there. Well, I'll, well, I say nay. I want an Inhumans ongoing book. I don't like the idea of just doing a small run, canceling it, and maybe down the line we'll maybe see another limited series. I'm not a fan of that because there's an uncertainty about it. Of course, uh, everybody started complaining about the X-Men and all that stuff. I won't get into it. I love all the characters. They're just uh, great in their own right. I don't happen to be a huge X-Men fan, but I've always liked the Inhumans because of the aspect that it's a secret society. They're not really humans, per se. They may look like uh, us, but it's a different species, if you will. They were tampered with back in prehistoric times, so they're not technically humans. That's the whole point. Even though they got superpowers and all that stuff, whatever. Their genetic makeup is different than the mutants, and that is what sets them apart, in my opinion. Now, this, the Book of Royals is really well written. It can get a little bit wordy, and it goes into s several mythological themes with uh, the characters and their journey to find out where they came from and what do they have to do to further progress their evolution. And I, uh, I'm trying my best not to spoil anything because I want you to experience it firsthand. The, the way the characters are written by Al Ewing it's a very smart, snappy dialogue. I love the team dynamic, especially with a certain character that hops on board. And it just, it, it's really fun. If you followed Charles' run, you're gonna enjoy this because it flows so well from what he was doing. And the voice that these characters are given does not deviate too much from what the previous author was doing. The one exception to this is the character of Gorgon that goes through a major change in his plot, in his history, that I'm sorry, I I didn't see it coming, I guess I need to reread some things, but it took me out of the story because I was like, come on man, that, now I, I, I am not a fan of a certain change that was made with him and another character. And I think it should have been done a little bit differently. It was a little bit too rushed. If there's anything wrong with this book, I'm going to say that it is probably a rushed story. And that tends to happen with the Inhumans. For some reason, since we don't get a whole lot of exposure to these characters, everybody has this notion that if you're writing an Inhumans book, you got to hurry it up because you don't know when it's going to be canceled. So you have, like, I think this was, like, 12 or 14 issues and just jam pack everything in and hope for the best and yeah Al does a good job of presenting a streamlined story about this uh, journey and of course it's not about the destination it's about the journey yada yada but the way it's concluded leaves much to be desired there is some prophecy stuff that happens near the end and you get visions the story shifts back and forth between timelines of a possible future with what could be the last in human and when you do find out what it is it's actually a pretty clever story twist if you will with the character of marvel boy and the way that he uh tells the inhumans like hey we i have got the solution for you about your ancestry your dna and all that stuff and it's he's the catalyst for the royal family to go into space also as if your homework wasn't hard enough the second volume which introduces the progenitors i think i said that right introduces or reintroduces i should say the concept of the universal inhumans which first popped up well not first popped up but it was prevalent in the later half of hickman's um fantastic four run when the inhumans left kree and returned to earth and suddenly a bunch of inhumans from outer space started popping up this book relies heavily on the fact that you know the layers of these characters and the royal family and what all the stuff that they've gone through. It sort of depends on that. So in that regard, I cannot fully recommend Royals if you've never read it. My heart is in it. I want to say, oh, you should go ahead and read Royals. But I know a lot of people will be confused as to what the heck's going on. You've got Medusa with short hair for some reason. You've got the character of Black Bull doing his own thing, which I happen to have the book right here. 
this is, runs um, alongside this book there is an explanation inside but it leads into the next chapter of the Inhumans saga if you will now uh, as for the art in this book I have to say um, John Boy Myers I love his art it's very expressive dynamic bright colorful and very kinetic energy manga inspired if you will but I was a little bit lost and, and you can see it right here on this image on the cover it's a bunch of stuff happening at the same time it's that kind of art style like here uh, it's it's a little bit crowded in my opinion a little bit muddied it looks great but reading it uh, I don't know I, I wasn't a fan as I thought I was going to be but it's still pretty damn cool to look at it's actually pretty cool seeing the different interpretations of Medusa uh, on these books because everybody has totally different uh, styles when it comes to drawing her hair and the usage of her powers and all that stuff so I always get a kick out of seeing what artists do with this character so uh, yeah after that Javier Rodriguez and several other artists jump in uh, it's not as flashy looking but man I I, uh, I gotta say I, I dug it you get beautiful landscapes like this and beautiful art that just look so cool to me <laughs> this is probably spoilers uh, but this particular spread was just fantastic i love this so much my one big gripe and with this i'm closing this video with every single inhumans book i mentioned it at the beginning of the video is the fact that they are so busy trying to present a cool kick-ass story that they forget that these characters thrive on drama dialogue and world building the world of atalan and the inhumans is magnificent it is super awesome it, it's it's very alien ish inside of earth and that is the aspect that i love i always tell my friends you know to me like the perfect inhumans book would be this game of thrones ask drama with like warring kingdoms and the politics and all that stuff and you do get that in most of the books but not enough to where i'm satisfied so that is always one of my major complaints but at the end of the day royals is about a family trying to find their place and to further um, develop and uh, evolve their species their family and all that stuff in the face of adversity in the face of extinction and how you can uh, proceed from there that is what I took away from Royals. I think Al Ewing did a fantastic job. What do you guys think of Royals? Let me know down below if you like the Inhumans. What One, what's your favorite Inhuman uh, family member? And two, what's your favorite Inhuman storyline? I'm very interested in finding out. Guys, thank you so much. As always, you can like, comment, and subscribe to A We Can Geek Them here on YouTube. Hit the notification bell thingamajig so you know when new videos are popping up. And, um, yeah, follow me on your favorite social media platform from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all that stuff. I'm probably there. Just type a we can geek them. And we can keep the conversation going. All right, I have got to go. Thank you once again, guys. You are the best. I will catch all of you on our next video. We're going to take, take, take. Did I skip anything? Nah.